All right, these are some additional notes that you can add to your spiral notebook for section 1.1. One, one. Um, a copy of the blank page is available in the section and you just can look at the video to get the answers. So the first question I asked you was what is a ratio? So a ratio is just a comparison of two values um, or of the values of two terms. So for example, if I'm going to compare the number of boys to the number of girls or something like that, then we're talking about a ratio as a comparison. Uh, we're going to be talking about ratios when we talk about percentages because it's always a ratio of the percentage over 100. Um, what's a proportion? So a proportion is just simply two ratios that are set equal to each other. So if I have a ratio that's one half and I have another ratio that's two fourths, those are two ratios that are actually equal to each other. If I were to simplify the two fourths, it would be the same as one half. So this section also talks about functions, but this specifically is talking about a one to one function. So a one to one function is a function that has only one x value for every y value and only one y value for every x value. So uh, you may have heard of a vertical line test. So this one has a vertical line test. It will pass the vertical and the horizontal line test. Okay. Um, so then we have a constant function. Is a constant function is a function that has the same value, same x, y value for every x value. So if I were to graph it, it would basically be just a horizontal line. Uh, the domain of the function, um, the domain of the function is the values that you put into the function. So if you look at the definition of a function earlier or in your guided notebook, it talks about a function is a value or an equation that has an input and output values. So the values that are input are usually called the x values or they are the x values and that's what we refer to as the domain. The range of the function are the values that are put out by the function. So when you substitute those x values in, it's the values that you get returned back. Uh, an independent variable, um, the independent variable are, is another term that we use for the values of the x values. Those are the values that are being inputted. And then the dependent variables are the output values of the y values. And I like to refer to this as they depend on what values you're putting in for x. So if I put different values in for x, I'm going to get different values for y. So y is the dependent variable. So another topic that they cover in this section quite a bit is loans. So the principle of a loan is the amount of money that you're borrowing for the loan. So it's how much money that you're borrowing from the bank. Um, it could also be thought of as how much money you're depositing into the bank. If you're thinking about um, some sort of um, um, like savings account or something like that. So it's the money that's um, going to be gaining interest or you're going to be paying interest on. And the interest for a loan, that's the amount of money that you agree to pay back to the lender above and beyond the amount that you borrowed. So it can depend on different interest rates um, as to how much money you're going to end up having to pay back. The interest rate is the percentage that you agree to pay back for the loan. Um, so different interest rates would depend on what kind of loan you're taking out. Like a personal loan might be 10%, 11%. Um, an equity loan might be 5 or 6%. Um, something that has collateral might have a lower percentage rate. Um, a car loan might be uh, 7 or 8%. It just depends on what you're borrowing and what your interest, what your uh, credit score is. Um, the period of the loan is the amount of time that you agree to borrow the money from the lender. So if it's a, a, a five-year loan, you agree to pay the loan back in 60 months. Or if it's a four-year loan, you agree to pay the loan back in 48 months. So the period of the loan is how long you agree with the lender at the beginning to have the loan for. 
The balance of the loan can be thought of a couple different ways. So it's the amount of the, one of the ways you can think about it at the very beginning, it's the amount of money that you're going to have to pay back to the lender. So it's the amount of money that you borrowed plus the amount of interest that you agree to pay. Um, over time, as you make payments on the loan, the balance of the loan will decrease. So over time, that balance will become less and less. But at the beginning, it's the amount of money that you agree to pay back. Okay. The annual percentage rate, um, that's the amount of interest that you will pay on the loan over a 12-month period of time. So it's always considered, because it's annual, it's considered 12 months period. The periodic rate is the amount of interest that you're going to pay for each period of the loan. So if I have a loan that's 12%, and if 12% is my annual percentage rate, if I'm going to make a monthly payment, then the period is one month. So that means that it would be 12% divided by 12, so that would be 0.01%. So that's how much money, that's the amount that I agree to pay back um, each month of the loan. Okay, the annual percentage yield is something a little bit harder to completely understand, but this is the effective annual rate considering the effect of compounding on the loan. So this would be particularly true for credit cards, um, so with a credit card, as you, um, as you let your balance hold over a different month, that means the amount of interest that you pay each month will increase. So um, the effective annual real yield is basically considering what's happening when you compound on that loan. Okay, we have a few more things to cover. So as we're getting into more of the... Um, Excel files, so you'll notice here you have a relative cell reference. The relative cell reference is the name of the cell in the spreadsheet, that, and we use the rows and the columns to name the cells. So examples of relative cell references are A3, B7, E13, there's a whole bunch of different possibilities. Um, so when you're writing problems, most of the time you're going to be using relative cell references, so you have to make sure that you're using those and not just typing in the values in your calculator. So a mixed cell reference um, uses a dollar sign symbol to make one part of the cell reference constant. So the dollar sign will prevent that part of the cell reference from changing when it's dragged. For example, if I type A and then dollar sign 1, that means that when I drag that value, the 1 will not change. So if I dragged it down, it would stay A1 all the time. If I dragged it to the right, it would became, become A1, B1, C1, and across. Um, so again, the 1 is a constant value. Um, in the second example, the dollar sign A5, the A is constant, so I, if I dragged it down, it would, it would become A5, A6, A7, A8, but it would drag down, it would, the, the A's would not change. And the dollar sign on the B means that the B will not change, so same as the second one that we just did. Uh, one of them that's a little bit more common is an absolute cell reference, and that's when you put the dollar sign on both parts of the cell name, and it prevents, again, um, anything from changing. So if I put a dollar sign on the A and a dollar sign on the 1, then what's going to happen is the A and the 1 won't change. So when I drag it down or drag it across, it'll always be A1. So you'll always want to use absolute cell references for anything that might be a constant in an equation. So I hope this helps. Um, good luck on this material.